Quran app removed from Apple's Chinese app store. Quran Majid, one of the most popular Quran apps across the world, was recently removed by Apple from their app store in China. Other religion-related apps were also removed. Apple Censorship. Apple Censorship, a activist website that aims to hold Apple accountable for its App Store transparency, announced that Apple had removed at least nine religion-related apps in the Chinese version of the App Store. This, the list includes apps for Jehovah's Witnesses, um, the, uh, what, is, what does this stand for? The NWT Bibles and other Bible apps. Responding to BBC, Pakistan Data Management Services, the makers of the Quran Majid, said that Apple removed their app from the Chinese market because, quote, it includes content that requires additional documentation from Chinese authorities. The Chinese embassy in the United States declined to comment on the recent app removals. Where I have a lot of I have a lot of thoughts on this. Go for you it. Wanna, okay. Um, technically, technically, based on Apple's own community standards, the Quran shouldn't be allowed on their App Store. Technically. Ooh, hot take. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> However, like, this the, shouldn't be there anyways. Good move. I know. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I don't want to I don't want to endorse this because the motivation that China has when it comes to removing this is not the same as why I would be endorsing removing the Quran from the App Store. I mean, I actually I don't I don't I, let me I, refer, I have to be very careful about how I phrase this. I would say that the, if the Quran is going to remain on the app, I, actually, I would support the Quran remaining on the app store. But that means that you have to fix the community standards to allow such content on the app store. You can't have it. You can't have a community standard where the Quran violates all the time in its verses, but then give the Quran a pass and then the rest of us if we make an app on the does it we don't get the same part with kind of privilege okay so if the current community standards apply the quran shouldn't be on the app store i would like the quran to remain on the app store because i want muslims to be able to get the content that they want even though i'm against the quran but if these rules apply it should apply equally to everybody if you want the app store to remain, if the Quran to remain on the app store, then other it should the things that the Quran promotes, and then other apps should be able to do the, so as well. Okay, so I don't know. However, even even though I would be like, if you're going to keep the community standards as it is, then the Quran should be removed because fair play, but you know, equal um, everybody should be treated equally, right? There shouldn't be no religion privilege. I still don't support China in doing this because China is not coming out and saying that you, this should be removed because it violates Apple's guidelines, right? China is, this should be removed because we're the only power at B in China. You know what I mean? Like, this is, this is, this is a way for China to be dominating all of the discussion and suppressing any anything that could challenge its authority. So obviously I don't endorse that, even though if it was being pushed for, for other reasons, I would be endorsing it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, hmm. um, this was ostensibly banned because it was hosting illegal religious texts. Like, let's be clear. Um, yeah. And this whole thing about the permitting and you need a permit to do this, this is just the Chinese government's way of um filtering and having control exerting control over their market so to be able to like fit within the standards of these permits you have to change your content and um it has to meet certain standards uh it, that are under their control right um and i thought it was really interesting that the um jehovah's witnesses and um 
apps were also removed. There were some um, big Bible apps that were removed, but they were reporting that they removed it themselves because um, they, again, had to provide a permit for their authorization to distribute uh, an app or content magazine in mainland China. And so they have to like completely remove it altogether. Um, what's also very interesting is that this is happening in the context and environment of a very quickly shifting um, atmosphere of what is allowed on uh, Chinese media. For example, on Friday, the Mac Observer reported that Audible, the Amazon-owned audiobook and podcast service, removed its app from the Apple Store in mainland China last month due to, quote, permit requirements. So again, something as large as Amazon's Audible is now removed from the Chinese market, again, because of these permitting, which mm. I'm going to assume is because they want to have tight control over the vast library of content that is available through Audible. Um, on Thursday, Microsoft said it was shutting down its social network, LinkedIn, in China, saying having to comply with the Chinese state had become increasingly challenging. So again, this is an instance of the control is so much that they're like, we can't even maintain working in this market because of um, the, how the the tight restrictions that you guys are putting on this. Um, and um, so this is also in the context of China very recently taking such, such actions as saying that media can't have, to use their words, like sissy boys on TV as much. They're not allowed to show or discouraged from showing more feminine men. And by feminine, I just mean like a K-pop guy, you know, like very clean, very stylish, young, like cute, not like, oh, macho. Or um, also um, mandating that children can play no more than three hours. The state is saying that the children can play no more than three hours of video games a week, and it can only be on weekends. Um, so in the midst of all the stuff that is going on, there are many people asking if China is undergoing some form or another cultural revolution. Um, at this point, I think that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but there is definitely an environment of Xi Jinping trying to revitalize China and also um, uh, revitalize Confucianism to a certain extent, obviously within a CCP lens. Um, but kind of trying to um, implement back these uh, sense of Chinese traditionalism. And that's coming at the cost of a lot of um, media freedom and information control recently. You know, I don't make predictions often, right? I'm against predictions because mm -hmm. they often end up being wrong. So I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to, I don't think this is going to work. I think this is going, this whole control of information is too late. It's too late for China for, you know, I, I think China went through the, uh, so went through the direction of opening its border and in, uh, accepting international in, you know, investments and cultural exchange at a rapid pace so much that you can't put the genie back in the box anymore. The force that you're dealing with is as as strong and authoritarian the Chinese government might be. This is not a force that you could stand against. This is not something you can undo. And this will backfire. In my prediction, which could be completely wrong, okay, this will backfire. This is this is a force that the Chinese the Chinese government is trying to stand against. And it's only going to turn more people, the more control they want to have, the more people are going to become frustrated and tired. And again, the level of control of information in the age of information, the level of control that I don't know, Mao or Stalin had over information is going to be impossible. There's going to be leaks and people are going to know what they're missing. And people already had a taste. You know, when you go against, I don't know, K-pop and gaming and censoring movies and apps, after people already have a taste of it, after already people see the appeal of it, 
you know, you just, you are going to, this is not going to be that what CCP wants this to be like is China, China's culture versus foreign influence and competing sources of power. But what it's actually going to end up becoming is CCP versus Chinese people. That's what the battle is going to turn into being. Because the peop the Chinese people already know what's happening. The Chinese people already seen the alternative. And the, they already had a taste to access to information and better and better values, right? You cannot you cannot make them forget this. You 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 were able to do that before, now you can't. And there's going to be more more and more ways for people to get access to what they want, right? There's going to be satellite internets, there's going to be harder to VPNs that are harder to find. So you just, you, the two cultures that you're creating is not Western culture and, or like, and religious culture versus CCP. It's going to be China, it's going to be the culture that is demanded and what the CCP is trying to mandate and the CCP is going to fail. And this is going to, the, the enemy, the, what, what, what the, what the CCP is like trying to build a, a new version of the Chinese wall, okay? But what they're gonna have to worry about is their enemy from within because you are turning against your own people. And at some point, it, it, this can't last forever. You could, what they were doing before that made so much progress so fast, so available to them was just riding the wave of you know liberalism in both culturally and economically and that's why they made so much progress in the past couple of years now they're slowly like trying wanting to control that and the only thing that is instead of trying to control instead of what what's what that's going to mean is that china is going to continue to grow china is going to continue to grow but what this actually threatens is whether or not the people who are in power are going to be crushed in the way or not like are, are they going to be there on the right with the rest of china or are the chinese people eventually going to replace the current people in charge because you know the ccp doesn't is not going to represent china china is a bigger force than the ccp and the growth of china is not going to be able to nobody's going to be able to stand in front of that including the ccp so if the ccp wants to stand in front of that train and just hold its arm out as if it could stop it China is going to grow without the CCP and the CCP will be crushed of the, or the current version of the CCP will be crushed along the way. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Totally. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.